Okay, question number eight part, um, from the sample assessment paper of P2 for the international A-level exam. Okay, so here we have a graph, okay, a sketch of part of the curves C1 and C2. C1 is y equals 10x minus x squared minus 8 and C2 is y equals x cubed. And for both of those, they're drawn for where x is greater than 0. Now, the curves C1 and C2 intersect at the points A and B. Um, the verify that the point A has coordinates 1, 1. So basically for here, they're not asking us to solve it simultaneously because it's only worth one mark. So basically what they want us to do is just substitute the value of x equals 1 into one of those equations. So when x equals 1, okay, you got y equals x cubed therefore y is equal to 1 cubed which is 1 so therefore okay 1 1 lies on c2 and therefore on c1 as well because they both intersect at that point okay you could have also substituted x equals 1 into here if we did that we'd get 10 times 1 minus 1 squared minus 8 which is that's 9 minus 8 which is 1 so when x equals 1 y is also equal to 1 in curve c1 okay so for sure a is the point 1 1 okay then it says use algebra to find the coordinates of the point b okay now if i want to use algebra to find the coordinates of the point b i have to basically solve the two equations simultaneously so i have y equals 10 minus x squared minus 8 and y equals x cubed so i have to make x cubed equal to 10 minus x squared minus 8 and solve this equation so let's bring everything to one side to try to find the factors of this so you're going to have x cubed plus x squared and you're going to have uh, sorry that's a 10x that's a 10x, be careful. x cubed plus x squared minus 10x plus 8 equals 0. Now we know that one solution to this equation is when x equals 1. And if that's a solution to this equation, that means x minus 1 is a factor. x minus 1 is definitely a factor because by the factor theorem, if you substitute a value into the equation, then x minus that number is going to be a factor of that. So we can do this in two ways, as I taught you before. One way is long division, and another way is by recognition. I'll do the recognition way here. So you've got x minus 1. Now we know that x, this is going to be a linear times a quadratic to give us a cubic. So this could be of the form ax squared plus bx plus c. That's the form of a quadratic of a quadratic. So I know that when I multiply these two together, I should get x cubed plus x squared minus 10x and plus 8. It's a cube there. Let me write that better. So that's x cubed. All right. So what I can do here is I can say, all right, I know that x times Let's, let's compare the x cubed coefficients first. Always choose the highest and the lowest. They're the easiest to deal with. Okay, so start with those. So on this side, I've got x times ax squared, which is ax cubed. So this side, the x cubed coefficient will be a. There will be no other x cubed coefficient. The only time I'm going to get x cubed, I'm do x times the x squared term. So on this side, there's how many x cubed? There's one x cubed. So a is one. That's pretty simple. The next one I'm going to choose is the constants because that's the next one that's simple because there's less terms to give us a constant. The only way to get a constant when you multiply these out is minus 1 times c. So on this side it's going to be negative c. And on this side the only constant of course is 8. So if negative c equals 8, that means c must be minus 8. c must be minus 8. Okay? All right. Now, the next thing is to find B. So we know what A is, we know what C is. It's to find B now. So what we can do is we can, let's choose either the X squared or the X. It doesn't really make much of a difference. So let's choose the X squared. So when you multiply this out, the X squared term will be got, got by doing two things. 
x times bx will give us bx squared, so that's going to be b. And there'll be another term, minus 1 times ax squared, that's minus a. And on this side, the number of x squared is just 1, there's 1x squared. So we know already that a is 1 from here, so we can say b minus 1 is equal to 1, so b is equal to 1 plus 1, which is 2. So we found b. We could have also found b using the x term. And I'm going to do it just to cross-check and just to show you. I could have used the x term. On this side, the x term is going to be given by x times c. So that's c times x. And minus 1 times b. So that's minus b. Okay, and that's equal to the x term on this side, which is minus 10. And we already found that c is minus 8. So you can say minus 8 minus b is equal to minus 10. So I can say that minus 8 plus 10 is equal to b. So you see that b is equal to 2. Okay, so we found um, a, b, and c. So we can say that um, this is the same as writing this as x minus a, x minus 1, sorry, times 1x cubed, 1x squared, sorry, ax squared, because a is 1 and b is 2 and c is um, minus 8. So it's going to be x squared plus 2x minus 8. If I multiply that out, I will get what we started with. Okay, so we, we, ha we can see that this is actually uh, now getting somewhere. Um, I'm going to go down here now, unfortunately, because the other page is taken up or something. So what I'll do is I'll just carry on down here. So now we haven't solved the question. It says find the coordinates of B. All right. So I have x minus 1 times x squared plus 2x minus 8 equals 0. When I solve this equation, I'll find the solution. So I know x equals 1 is a solution. So the other solution that we can find from x squared plus 2x minus 8 equals 0. So let's try to solve this. We have x. I think this factorizes. It does. We've got 4 and 2, haven't we? So we're going to have uh, 1 is plus, 1 is minus. Okay, you've got 4 times 2 is 8, so it's going to be 4 here and a 2 here. Okay, so x equals negative 4. x equals negative 4. And x equals positive 2. Now, the coordinates of b must be 2. x it must equal 2. Because the other place where they intersect... Okay, it says when x equals, where else would they intersect? x equals negative 4. Ah, yeah, they're going to intersect again. This is x cubed. So this, if this continued on going, this is x cubed. It's going to go this way. It's going to drop quickly. And this is going to go carry on going down here. But eventually they will meet somewhere, which will be when x is minus 4. But we're not concerned about that because we only consider where x is greater than 0. And we can see that b is in the positive side. So we can discard this solution in this particular part of the question. And we say x equals 2. And they're asking us to find the coordinates of the point b. Okay, so the coordinates of the point b okay, is when x equals 2. And because b lies on both curves it's easy for us to just put y equals x cubed if we put that into here so y is equal to 2 cubed which is 8 so the coordinates of the point b is 2 and 8 okay so this is the solution that we're going to accept because of course that's the positive one all right so that is the answer for that part of the question now the next part so this is 2 here this is 1 sorry and this is 2. Okay, and that is 8. 1, 1 and 2, 8. Okay. Let me just uh, draw this here because we might need it. <clears throat> so these are the points where they intersect. That's two, 2 over here and that's 1 over here. Okay. So the next part of the question says um, the finite region R is bounded by C1 and C2. Use calculus to find the exact area of R. So we got to integrate. Now, when you have the area between two functions, okay, 
the easiest way to find the area between two graphs is to basically subtract the equations of those two graphs from each other. Now, I can see that in the region R, this is higher up and this is lower down. See, this is above this. So if we were to subtract these two equations from each other, I would subtract the one that's higher up from the one that's lower down. So I'll, I'll end up with a positive area. So what I'm going to do is that the area is going to be the integral between the limits of 1 and 2 of the curve C1, which was C1. C1 is the quadratic. So, one way. C1 is the quadratic. So this is C1 and this is C2. So you can see the quadratic is above the cubic, so I'll do the integral of C1 minus C2 with respect to x. Okay, so that's going to be between the limits of 1 and 2. C1 is 10x minus x squared minus 8 and minus x cubed. So I'm going to integrate that with respect to x between the limits of 1 and 2. And that will be the area R. So let's see what we're going to get. So the area R is equal to... Uh, we can actually start integrating. There's no need to do anything. Everything's ready and prepared for integration. So now I can write my square bracket and actually integrate. So 10x, you have to add 1 to the power, divide by the new power. So it's 10x squared over 2. So that gives you 5x squared. Minus x squared, you add 1 to the power, it gives you minus x cubed over 3. So minus x cubed over 3. Any constant will just have an x added to it x to the power of 3 will become x to the power of 4 divided by the new power of 4 and we have to substitute 2 and 1 into this to give us our area that we're looking for so you're going to have 5 times 2 squared minus 2 cubed over 3 minus 8 times 2 minus 2 to the power of 4 over 4 and that's going to be subtracting from that you're going to have one put into all of these so you're going to have five minus one third minus eight minus a quarter okay so let's see what that gives us so that's five times four which is 20 that's minus that's eight over three that's minus 16 and that's minus that's going to give you 16 over four which is four minus, put this in a bracket, you're going to have 5 minus 8, which is minus 3. You've got minus 3, and you've got minus a third, minus a quarter. So you're going to have uh, minus 3, which is minus, let, let's make them all over 12. So that's minus over 12. So that's minus 36 over 12 minus um, 3 times 4, minus 4 over 12, and minus 3 over 12. Okay, I'm just I'm not using the calculator, which I really should have, anyway. 20 minus 16 is 4, minus 4 is 0. 20 minus 16 is 4 minus 4 is 0, so you're left with minus 8 over 3, minus, and you're going to have here, that's minus 43 over 12. So you end up with minus 8 over 12. Let me make this over 12 as well because we're going to have to add them together. So 3 times 4 is 12. So you have minus 4, 4 eighths of 32, minus 32 over 12, plus 43 over 12, um, minus 32 plus 43 is going to be 11 isn't it uh, 43 minus 32 is 11 so you have 11 over 12 square units and there we have our answer okay we could have just put that in a calculator now what you can do to check your answers now this is something that's very useful for you but don't use it and not show any steps this is just to help you to make sure in an exam that you did the right thing Okay, so what you can do is you can use your integral button here. And you can put in the limits 1. Oops. This, you can put in the equation first, so bracket 10x, so 10. And then you have this button that you can use 
um, for x in this calculator. Okay, so you have, um, let's start that again. You have basically your equation. Now, you can use um, this button here for x. There's a button here. In some calculators, the newer calculators, there's actually a button on its own x you can use. But this particular calculator, to get to that x, I've got to press alpha. It's the one on the right here, alpha. So I've got an x. Okay, so I need 10x. So I'll put 10x. Okay, because I'm integrating this. So 10x. Okay, and then minus x squared. So minus alpha, and this is going to give me x, and then I square that. Minus 8, so minus 8, and then minus x cubed. So minus an alpha x, and then I've got to cube that. Shift and this. Close the bracket, and then we can put the limits between 1 and 2. Okay, so you have 10x minus x squared minus 8 minus x cubed between the limits 1 and 2. That equals 11 over 12, which is what we got. So that's a way for you to check in the exam. Now, if you just wrote your answer from here, 11 over 12, without showing the important steps are to show uh, the fact that you've integrated each term and to show that you've substituted the values in. If you just use a calculator from here and not do all of this stuff that I did and get from there to there, that's perfectly fine. But what they're looking for is the method mark of um, integrating and to see that you know what to do with these numbers and then the rest of it no problem just go straight from here stick that in your calculator and get your answer that's fine and you can check the answer by using that function to make sure that you've done it correctly in your calculator some calculators have it slightly the new ones are a bit easier to use um, um, but that's perfectly fine so there is I think the end of that question yes it is and we're done with this thank you very much